Hey, what's up guys? My name is Taylor from Bag Riders. Uh, today we are going to pull this engine out. In the previous episode, I had pretty much torn everything out, diagnosed that there was some severe fluid leakage going on. So figured it was the best thing to do was to just take this motor out. I'm gonna pull a bunch of the accessories off, clean it all up, probably replace some things uh, down the line that I was not originally anticipating when I first took on this part of the project, which was kind of diagnosing some of the known issues. We're on a good trajectory, I think, but uh, I'm gonna yank this thing out today, and uh, yeah, here we go. My last two gloves. Thanks, COVID. The trick is gonna be to get to these motor mounts, because they're kind of a... Uh, tight package in here. See, third. Now I'm not sure if this is the correct way to remove these motor mounts. You're supposed to be able to get it from the top and I felt up here and there's nothing on the top, but I figure I'll pull the whole thing out, look at the motor mounts and then put these base motor mounts back in before I put the motor back in that way everything can stay aligned and hopefully I can get to the bottom of these I gotta clean up a little bit We just got the motor out with the help of uh, whale seam and uh, it's kind of precariously placed on this pallet for now. Hopefully it doesn't roll off of it. This thing was a bit of a uh, task to get out. There's a lot of stuff connected that I didn't realize and fortunately we only broke like one thing maybe. I don't know. One or two. It's not bad. It's all repairable stuff. Nothing crazy. Just like wires and then some coolant hoses that I was going to replace anyway. Motor's out. Time to clean it up. It's just going to be better than ever. Boom. The overall idea right now is to just kind of disassemble this down to kind of a long block. I'll probably keep things in like the fuel uh, injectors. Uh, I mainly want to get the harness off so I can figure out a plan of attack, what I want to take off. Thinking about Cerakoting some of this stuff. Just make it look kind of cool. I mean, might as well, right? the things out and uh, who knows when the next car show is gonna be. So might as well do some cool stuff. I think it's gonna be sweet. Right now I'm just talking in circles. I'm gonna get to work, at least clean this thing up. And look who just showed up. What's going on guys? <laughs> Yo Zach, uh, you showed up at the right time because uh, I literally, this literally just happened. I was putting it up, it like topped out. I guess the jolt was the last jolt, the, 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 the straw to break the camel's back. I was hoping you put the hood through the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wilson just popped the lower heat shield off and this thing is grimy. That's so thick, dude. That's what she said. <laughs> a little bit of a status update. We got a lot of stuff coming off of this. We got intake manifold, fuel components, throttle bodies, uh, harness is most of the way off. We got uh, just a little bit left to unplug. We had to get this other intake manifold off. These things are just filled with oil. Stick your finger in there. Yeah, yeah full of oil. <laughs> That's why I'm doing the catch cans on this thing. I had done them on one side, but uh, what had happened is I ordered one when I thought I ordered two, and it was kind of like at the beginning of this whole COVID thing. So they were the second one was delayed way out, so I didn't get it for like a month. When this goes back in, both the passenger and driver's side banks of this motor will have oil catch cans. There's there's even more oil under this heat shield here that's just resting in the valley of the motor. It's gonna go back in the car way better than it's ever seen in its life, probably since it was new. It that's a high bar, but... It leaked from the factory. From the factory, yeah. I'm gonna keep on trucking. As you 
can see Wilson and I made some uh, serious progress tearing this thing down. This here is the main source of the problem. I think this plastic piece probably saw one too many heat cycles. Let's just say 750 too many heat cycles. So if you're picking up what I'm throwing down. So that broke, that is spraying coolant all over the place. Also, there is this manifold to which both turbos drain and I believe either the O-rings in here or the crush washers on top of the turbos were leaking. Uh, but there is oil being forced into the bearings of the turbos and that's where I think the primary oil leak on the top of this motor was coming from, from these banjo fittings here. So as you can see, there is a lot of oil in here. What ends up happening is it gets to a certain level and there's a little hole. I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but there is a hole right here to the left of this bolt. So basically anything in that valley is allowed to escape through that hole. What happened is exactly that. As you can see by the condition of the back of the block. Uh, a little bit of a hiccup. We don't have bolts long enough to bolt through the engine stand bracket into the back of the block. So I'm gonna have to order some of the right thread pitch and size and hopefully it takes no more than a day to get here i would go to some place like fastenal locally but but we are still in the midst of that nasty c word event coronavirus i wanted to drain the oil out of the motor so i don't know why i want to do that but i didn't do it before i pull it out of the car my fault uh, basically I want to pop the oil pan off, replace the oil pan gasket, things like that. And, uh, yeah, so I think the next thing I'm going to do here is, uh, I don't know. I got to think about that for a moment. I think I'm just going to sit and stare at it and hope it fix itself. So, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to clean up the valley of this motor. We're all the sus was living that's what i'm doing hope you like it all right so here is a little bit of a before just gonna clean this little area here and uh hope it makes me feel a little bit better about this kind of hit another hiccup uh i don't have any inverted torques which is what you need to get these little suspects out. I'm kind of at a point where everything I need to take off this motor requires an inverted Torx. Uh, I got away with it with some of the larger stuff, but this smaller stuff, it's a little bit more precise, so I don't really want to make some sort of jank move and make more work for myself later on down the line. I cleaned this up about as good as I could for now until I get this on the stand and can really get into it and block off some of the stuff where I don't want debris going in. Yeah, so this is pretty much where I'm gonna leave this episode because, because anything else that I do right now is gonna involve cleaning. I don't have a parts washer, so I think I'm gonna get one of those because rags are not good for the sea turtles. So I don't wanna put a lot of those out there swimming around with the sea turtles because how would you feel if you were a sea turtle and you're swimming around and there was this nasty oily shop rag swimming around with you wouldn't be so pleasant right but anyway this motor is gonna get torn down probably as far as possible without doing a, like a rebuild my time here with this motor tonight is done but uh my overall time with it is long from done because uh, I am about 0% in the grand scheme of things. I'm going negative. That is that. I will see you guys on the next episode. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.